Hello everyone. Can you get people in and seated? And <laughs> today. Please um, know how grateful we are that you decided to spend some time this afternoon with us here at the fellowship, all of you who are watching virtually as well. And um, I see some new faces, so I'm going to 
remind everybody and tell the new folks that in your packet that you had on your chair, there is a card in that envelope uh, called a comment card. And that's um, where you can, yes, Nancy's holding it up here. You, if you would like to add someone to our prayer list and to our prayer later in the, the service, just put their name on that and drop it in the basket as it comes around later on. And now we're going to sing our opening song as we always do. I want to invite you to stand and sing along with us. It's Prayer of the Child of Love and the song words are right on the front of your songbook. Please stand. Father, Mother, God, your kingdom come, your holy will be holy done. Spirit, source of love, you flow through me, your loving child, eternal In every way, Amen. Every day, I will pray again. Father, Mother, God, Your kingdom come, Your holy will be holy. Spirit source of love, you flow through me, your loving child eternally. Everywhere, let love be there, amen. Everywhere. This my prayer again. Father, Mother, God, your kingdom come, your holy will be holy done. Spirit, source of love, you flow through me, your love be. Thank you so much, and please be seated. Thank you, Corey, for that beautiful, beautiful song. I'd like to invite everyone to now join me in our opening meditation. Please, if you're comfortable, close your eyes. And just begin to relax. Let your shoulders drop and leave all the busyness and doing from this morning outside the door. And let's take our three deep fellowship breaths with an audible ah on the out breath. And on that out breath, just release any stress that might be lurking. So breathing in. <sighs> Breathe in. <sighs> One more breath. Breathe in. <sighs> Let's bring our attention into our heart space. You might put your hand on your heart just to keep your attention there. As we bring our full attention and awareness to the one divine presence, a presence we live, move, and have our being in, pure spirit and pure love. We experience this love, this goodness, 
to the degree we accept it and believe it and feel it. And so we open to the flow of this unlimited love, a divine love that flows through us into worldly expression. And through our every thought, feeling, and act, we express the highest frequencies of kindness, compassion, light and laughter, unconditional love. And we willingly demonstrate this love. We hold the space of this love and open our minds and hearts to its guidance and inspiration. We see ourselves and all beings at one with the all that is. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to introduce our wonderful musicians and vocalists right now for some wonderful special music. Our wonderful Winnelly Zeeb and Corey Williams. Please give them a warm welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Uh, Corey and I are so grateful to share a song we both love entitled The Song of Your Heart uh, by Peter Kater and Satnam Kaur. Beautiful it is, how beautiful it is, 
as the flower blossoms fall. Rise before the morning light, let your soul take its flight. God is with you, listening, so sing, sing, sing. Sing, sing, sing. Sing, sing, sing. You are becoming the song of your heart. How beautiful it is. How beautiful it is as the flower blossoms fall. You are becoming the song of your heart. How beautiful it is. How beautiful it is as the flower blossoms fall. You are becoming the song of your heart. How beautiful it is. How beautiful it is. As a flower blossoms going to sing a fellowship song together now. Um, I'd like for you all to join in, and I just want to remind everyone to stay standing after the song so that you can greet each other um, and uh, with a hug or a handshake or whatever is comfortable for you. Please turn to page 44. And we're going to be singing the rest of my life. And I'd love for you to stand if you are able. The rest of my life is just beginning. The rest of my life will start today. I'm choosing this moment of my life to start the changes that will bring happiness and peace of mind to stay. 
I'm releasing the past with all its errors. The future will bring what I desire. And as I flow along with life, I'll learn the way to live the rest of my life. I'll live in love. My divine plan is now being revealed. I've opened myself to change and grow. I'm attracting the people in my life who I'll be serving and who will teach me lessons that I need to grow the rest of my life. I'll live with laughter, enjoying each moment, and I'll be and as the changes come, I learn about the way to live the rest of my life. I live in love. That's beautiful. Now, please spend a few moments greeting each other and sending each other love.
Thank you. You took that hint really well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, everyone. I am very excited to welcome a new guest speaker this afternoon. And I just said to her, I feel like we've known each other forever. You know how that happens? And we've probably said um, 10 words to each other since you got here. <laughs> Maybe 15. Um, so very excited to have this um, wonderful and accomplished woman, extremely talented, social worker, psychotherapist, recording artist, meditation teacher, author, and speaker, and much more. Please welcome Reverend Jan Bidwell. It is so great to be here. It is so great to be here. I speak very softly, so I need this uh, assist here. Did you push the button? Oh, I have to push a button. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you, Mary, for reaching out, and Richard, thank you very much. I was looking for this place since I moved here. I, I got here in 2016, came back to Michigan, and heard about a 4.30 Saturday meeting of a spiritual community that the person, I can't remember who the person was, who said I would love it, and couldn't find you, and then you weren't meeting, and then I got busy, and then you found me. <laughs> it's is very cool, right? So it's really nice to be with like-minded people. Um, I know all of you are mindful because you have mindly, mindfully chosen this community to be with. I'm going to move the microphone. There we go. How's that? Can you hear me? Everybody can you hear me? So today I want to talk about joy and how to sustain that. It's a practice and how to experience and find peace and sustain it without grasping, right? Um, I thought I'd look at the root of the words, joy and peace, and the basic root of the word is rejoice. Um, it comes up in different languages to be essentially rejoice. Um, inward joy, source of pleasure, but rejoice. And peace, I love the translation of the Jewish word shalom. Because it's peace, it's a sense of peace, but we offer it to others. In, in Judaism, it's not something we do alone, right? Prayer, prayer for the well-being of others, other cities and other nations. So, none of the work that I do is just, all the practices that I do every day, I've been meditating for 39 years. I don't do it just for me, right? I do it for, uh, my intention is for the betterment of the world. Because we need other human beings. Human beings, so as a therapist, I'm gonna switch hats a little bit from being a minister to uh, a therapist. Human beings need humans. It's our basic need. Thousands and thousands of years ago, we all came together in groups and clans and tribes. So we're hardwired to need that. At the same time, we're hardwired to look out for danger. The negative, positive asymmetry, the negativity bias, we are, our bodies react to what we think is danger before our minds can even say, oh no, it's really okay. We are hardwired that way. And it's good, because we do need to be safe. We need to know if we're walking in a parking lot at night if we're safe. We need to know that our doors are locked. We need to be safe but we are not nearly as endangered as we were thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago, one in 10 people died because they were prey. That, that doesn't happen anymore. So we need to learn to find ways to take a break. We need to find ways to step away from that negativity. We are Velcro then for the negative and we're Teflon for positive. So we remember the negative stuff that happens but the good stuff falls away pretty quickly. And we survived as a species because we didn't go pet the baby, 
tiger, because remember how soft kitties are, we remember the mother being ferocious, right? So we survive. But we can only connect with other people when we feel safe. We have to be able to perceive neuroception. We need to be able to perceive when we're in safety. And we need to be able to feel it in our gut when we're safe, right? People need to perceive that in us as well. So the connection we make with other people, it happens very quickly in the brain. But really what we, the only thing we have to offer other people is our inner state. Right, they, you all ha are perceiving me and my inner state may be a little bit nervous, but happy to be here, right? And then you can feel welcomed by me and I very much feel welcomed by you. But if I came in here angry and strident and gonna teach you all, after listening so far, I don't know exactly what I can teach you guys because you're already there, right? But if I came in with that state, you guys wouldn't be hearing my words, you'd be put off by my inner state, right? So mindfulness is the way we get to that soothed inner state. Mindfulness is the way we don't go with the negativity bias. That being alert and relaxed and attentive in the present moment without judgment is how we grow and change. So one of the things, if anybody is, is how many people here meditate like regularly almost every day. Is there anybody who doesn't meditate? Okay, so is there anybody new to meditation at all? So then this may be something that you already know, but our brains are wired also to wander. You've heard of monkey mind from the East. Well, neuroscience now talks about the default mode network in our brain, that when we're at rest without a task to do, our minds wander. And we think about the future, we think about the past, it's self-referential, and it's negative. So if you kind of merge that with the internet, it can go really badly. <laughs> <laughs> so there are lots of conspiracy theories because people are afraid of they gotta protect their clan and these people are doing bad stuff and we gotta be careful, right? So my idea is maybe we could do a conspiracy theory about joy and peace Maybe we can begin to train to really seriously get to the nuts and bolts of how do I uplift myself so that I have something to give. Because when we love anybody, especially ourselves, it goes in all directions. It's not unidirectional, you all know that, right? But it takes some training. And when our mind wanders, we need to be very sweet and gentle with ourselves about it and let ourselves know, oh, I'm human. That's why my mind's wandering. When people come to me about meditation, they say, I tried, I can't, because I can't stop my mind. You don't have to. Your mind's gonna chatter, until it doesn't, and then maybe it will start again, and maybe it'll be quiet for a long time, and maybe not, who knows? It doesn't matter, because you, again and again, you can come back to your breath, you can come back to your point of focus, however it is that you meditate, right? So, We know that we have muscle memory, neurons that wire together, fire together. So when we consistently look for good things, we burn new neural pathways. We begin to see more good things the more we work at it. So with my patients, I will have them start with gratitude in the shower because you're standing up or you're sitting, you've got a roof over your head. So I'm thankful I can stand or sit thankful for my, the roof over my head. I'm thankful for the water. I'm thankful that it's warm. I'm thankful I can reach with my hands. I'm thankful I can put my hands over my head. I'm thankful for sh shampoo. I'm thankful I can wash my hair right here, right now. So just as a practice, if you can right now, just pay attention to what you have in the moment. You have a roof over your head. You have air from the fan. I'll let you continue for yourself. Like what is it right here, right now? If you can do that for 30 seconds a day, I have people do it with structure and intention at certain points of the day, right? They choose the points of the day. Um, it, becomes, it becomes natural. It becomes a habit. And then under stress, you have it. 
It's very hard to start a spiritual practice when you're under stress. It's like you don't practice a Beethoven piece for the first time on stage with an audience, right? You practice and practice and practice, and then you can do it when you're under stress. So if you can bake that in, I, I try to work with people to do their practices throughout the day. And I have patients that are going through stress, and I've been working them, with them for a couple of years, and I'll say, how are your practices? How's your breathing? Because I do a lot of different practices. They go, I'm not doing too much, except I do breathe every day. And, and I'm doing gratitude throughout the day. Oh, and, and I'm also doing it today because it's a part of them now. And that's the point, to be able to make it a part. So if you can figure out a time to do the gratitude that way, if you don't do it already, I really invite you to do it with structure and with intention. Um, and sustain, sustaining positive experiences is also called savoring. I like the scientific term now, because savoring could mean, it's kind of like there are savory foods, and what does savoring really mean? But if you can su sustain something that's joyful, something that brings you pleasure, you, you'll be able to tolerate it longer and longer. So what I'm gonna do is play the bowl just for a little bit and invite you to have, you know, drench yourself in the sound bath. Sound is so healing and wonderful. But notice when I stop, how it continues. And then let yourself stay present with it as long as you can. So I'm gonna do that. What do you experience right now? Let yourself be aware. Is that peace? Is that stillness peace? See if you can let that continue. And again, the more you practice this, the more you do it again and again, it gets fuller and fuller. So now I want to do some work with savoring, and chocolate or grapes. <laughs> so I've asked people to pass out, if you have grapes with, uh, I washed my hands before, washed them, put toothpicks in and that were clean, um, but the chocolate is wrapped. So go ahead and, yeah. And then we have napkins. So I will also ask you not to eat it now. I know it's tempting. It won't be long, I promise. Um, take one of each. Um, I'm not sure there's enough. I'm not sure there's enough. If you don't, if is anybody like can't eat sugar? I think we have enough chocolate for everybody, pretty sure. Um, There's chocolate coming if you really want chocolate instead of a grape. You can get chocolate. Oh, now you need chocolate. <laughs> And do take a napkin if you have chocolate because I'm going to ask you to unwrap it before we start and it could melt in your hand if you don't have a napkin. It's all very practical, the training.
and a napkin. Because yeah. it's going to melt your hand when you take it out. There you go. So is everybody set? Okay. So I'm going to guide you in the meditation. And then, and then I'll prompt you when to put the sweet in your mouth. And um, I'm just going to invite you then, when we do that, to really let this be your focus, the focus of this meditation. But go ahead and find yourself the most comfortable position that you can be in. Let yourself feel grounded. Take the time to get comfortable so you don't have to shift after. And begin to pay attention to your breath. And if you're comfortable lowering or closing your eyes, And feel the chair underneath you, and the ground under your feet. Take a moment to scan your body and see if you find any tension. And release it. Paying attention to the in-breath and the out-breath. And a word can be helpful for the mind. If you don't have one, you could use here on the in-breath. And now on the out-breath. to be here now. And if your mind drifts and wanders very, very sweetly, very gently, shift your awareness back to your breath. Here. Take your sweet and put it in your mouth. You may need to take a bite because they're kind of large, the chocolates. And be aware of that sensation. And be fully saturated with sweetness. Here. Now. And welcome the rejoicing and simply be
allow yourself to come out of meditation very slowly if you can. And again, notice any peace. The sweetness will fade away. Whatever it is we're savoring will fade away. But see if you can find that moment of peace and make it larger. Make it fuller. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. See if you can still hold on to that sense of peace and the sweetness. And if you haven't moved yet, let yourself slowly wiggle your fingers and your toes. Part of the practice for me is how much of this inner steadiness and fullness I can take into every moment. I think everybody's back. Does anybody have any questions? We're too peaceful. Hmm? We're too peaceful. Good. That's good. That's good. I'm so glad you guys found me. Because <laughs> I've been looking for you. It's always that way, isn't it? <laughs> so I know my voice is very soft. I hope you can hear me. And I am um, so grateful to be able to be here today. Shalom. Thank you, Jan, for the wonderful experience and wonderful message. This is the time in our service when I ask you all to pause and fill your hearts with gratitude for all of the blessings and gifts in our lives and for the wonderful blessing and gift of the fellowship, this amazing spiritual community that many of us have belong to for many, many years. And I'm going to just remind everyone we're celebrating our 41st anniversary this month. And with your generous, generous contributions, we will be supported as we move forward into our 42nd year. So John is going to come around with the basket Please remember if you have someone you'd like to offer for up in prayer, um, put that card in the basket as well. And Corey will guide us as we sing, I am grateful. Sing with me. Grateful, I am
the blessing of our tithes and offerings with me. The light of divine love shines eternally, blessing and multiplying our tithes and offerings. I joyously give, knowing I always have enough to share and to spare. Thank you again for your generosity. And now let's just take another moment and go within and extend our love to all those who are listed in the basket today. All those beautiful beings that we hold close in our hearts. And affirmatively we pray. They are healthy and whole. Find clarity and wisdom where it is needed. And safety where it is needed. We affirm that our love reaches their hearts and they can feel how much everyone in this room loves them. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you. I'm going to introduce our, our special musicians and vocalist again. Wen Lee and Corey. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> this second selection is a song entitled It's All Right. <laughs> and it's by a lovely group entitled Mom Muse. Love them. <clears throat> It's all right, all right. Any choice you make is all right. And any road you take will get you somewhere. When you get there, that's when you'll get there. It's all right, all right. Cause you can't do it wrong. You can't do it wrong, that's right. You can't do it wrong. You can't do it wrong, that's right. You can't do it wrong. Go ahead and give. Go ahead and give yourself to it. Go ahead and give. Go ahead and give it all. Go ahead and give. Go ahead and give yourself to it. Go ahead. Go ahead and give it all. It's all right, all right. Any choice you make is all right. And any road you take will get you somewhere. And when you get there, that's when you get there. It's all right, all right. Cause you can't do it wrong. You can't do it wrong, that's right. You can do it wrong. You can do it wrong. That's right. You can do it wrong. Go ahead and give. Go ahead and give yourself to it. Go ahead and give. Go ahead and give it all. Go ahead and give. Go ahead and give yourself to it. Go ahead and give. Go ahead and give it all. Go ahead and give it all. Go ahead and give it all. Give it, give it, give it. Ooh, give it, give it, give it all. Give it, give it, give it. Ooh, give it, give it. 
give it all, give it, give it, give it, ooh, give it, give it, give it all, give it, give it, give it, ooh, give it, give it, give it all, give it, give it, give it, ooh, give it, give it, give it all, give it, give it, give it, ooh, give it, give it, give it all. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> thank you. Well, I just want to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon and sharing your loving energy with us, all those who are watching online as well. What a wonderful service and just loving, loving energy all around. Thank you, Winnelly and Corey, for your beautiful music, and uh, Jan for your beautiful message and experiences. I'm still tasting that lovely chocolate. <laughs> Forgot how good those are. <laughs> so thank you all for, for being here with us. I have a few announcements. One very important one, There's there are some flyers available for you. There, um, for, do you remember the peace event, peace um, sing out for peace event we had last weekend? This is a continuation of the Peace Quest events that are happening all through September. It's a peace picnic. I think that sounds pretty wonderful. Um, and it's coming up September 21st from 1 to 4 at the Lake Lansing North Sand Hill Pavilion. And there are some of these floating around if you need need to have the information to take with you. I believe it's a potluck. Yes, Samantha? Uh, and our dear Samantha is the one who was um, facilitating this. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. So. And Matt Blyton will be there. And Matt Blyton will be there with music. Yes. So that's wonderful. We also have Death Cafe coming up on Saturday, September 21st at 2 p.m. here in this building. Reminder again to please come and support Ian Whitney. He's um, our School of Ministry student who's being ordained on Saturday, September 28th at 3 p.m. And our big fellowship 41st anniversary celebration and potluck, along with a very brief membership meeting on the last Sunday of this month, September 29th, after service. Sue Quinn is also... Um, uh, we'll be doing her Waldemar Walk on Sunday, October 6th at 12.30 p.m. And, as always, Healing Movements with our dear Julie Dillon on Mondays at 4 p.m. and Chair Yoga on Thursdays at 4 p.m. It's wonderful. Please join us. And now I'd like to invite all of you to join us in our Peace Circle. We'll sing the Peace Song and say our closing blessing. The words are on the back of your bulletin. Without us, we ain't